All right, guys, in this video, we're going to go over the Witch Doctor pet build, and you've probably seen some variations of this running around, and I'm going to go over a few of the spells that I'm using uh, to kind of give you an idea on how much fun this build can be. I've been having a ton of fun. Uh, certain other classes you play, you know, they're maybe a little bit higher stress because you're running around trying to stay alive, stuff like that. Uh, this build can be a lot of fun as well as do a lot of damage. And uh, we'll go over the build here. And this is not one specific build. There's a lot of variations to this that you can use. And quite honestly, I run with different uh, variations at different points, depending on uh, the group I'm running with or whether I'm running solo. Uh, this build is more of a solo build that I run with. And we'll go over some of the uh, aspects that you can go to um, with the different skills. Uh, for the primary skill, we're going to run Firebomb with the Pyrogeist here. Uh, this creates a column of flame that spews fire at the closest enemy for 880% weapon damage as fire over 6 seconds. And you can cast three of these, and depending on if you're, you know, fighting an elite that you can't get in on, or depending on, you know, what group you're running with, it's going to look a little something like this. And you can cast it in any direction, you can cast it in three different spots. Um, and it's going to shoot out. It's got a pretty long range. This is a good spell depending on, you know, what group you're running with. I personally run with this a lot uh, just because it also gives you a chance to summon fetishes, which we'll get into here in one second. Uh, for the main uh, skill that we are going to use, we're going to run Fire Bats with the Vampire Bats rune. Uh, this means that Fire Bats has no, no longer has a channeling cost, and the initial cost is 225 mana, and we'll go over how this is slightly different, uh, but it's going to do 425% weapon damage as fire. Uh, it's got a pretty decent range. You will have to fight a closer quarters, uh, but this does a lot of damage. It's good when you're grouping stuff up, but as you can see, if you watch the mana pool here, you'll actually see it go down, and then the channeling cost. There is no channeling cost, and um, you know that we'll go over that here in just one second. Um, under one of our skills here, I am currently running Wall of Zombies uh, with the Wrecking Crew rune. This taunts the enemies, and this brings all the enemies uh, all together in one certain area. Um, I've got, you know, all my pets and everything around me that just have one general area to run to instead of chasing stuff all over the map. And we'll go over some gameplay as soon as we go over the skills so you can kind of see this in action. Uh, a couple other things that people have been using has been the piranhas uh, with the tornado effect here to pull everything in. This has a fairly significant cooldown. Um, if you're using certain passive skills, it's not that long, but it does eat up quite a bit of mana. The uh, wall of zombies uh, does not have a mana cost. Uh, so this is a good, easy one. It's good to group stuff up. And we'll go over again. All this is going to kind of come back together in terms of how this is going to run to. Uh, there are some other skills that uh, you'll see people use, especially me in certain groups, is Mass Confusion with the Paranoia Rune. Uh, this causes enemies to attack each other. The cooldown is 60 seconds, um, but with one of the passive skills, this comes around a lot quicker. And this does it for 12 seconds, so this can help you do damage. It can help, you know, the enemies kill, them, kill each other. Uh, and the rune here gives an extra 20% additional damage to those enemies that are affected, or I'm sorry, in the area. Uh, so this can be a win-win situation. It can save you in certain areas to kind of keep monsters off of you. But depending on what group you're running with, there are going to be a lot of other things you can do. Uh, we won't go over all the different options because there are quite a few to go with, especially Spirit Walk, uh, especially depending on what Torment level you're playing uh, on because this can get you out of a lot of, bad sp a lot of bad spots. The cooldown on it is really quick with a certain passive. And uh, this here can help heal you. So you can heal out and get out of a lot of damage. Uh, with this. So this is one to keep in mind. We'll go over it here in a minute. Uh, Fetish Army. Uh, this is the big cooldown. This is good for burning down bosses, burning down elites. Uh, if you're running four-piece uh, Zunis, then you probably don't even need to watch this video uh, because you're going to keep these guys up all the time. Everybody's farming for that. Um, I'm running with the increased number of dagger-wielding fetishes here by three. Uh, depending on what you're running on, uh, you know, you can do different stuff, especially if you have plus physical damage or in certain areas, I find that there's just too many uh, pets on the map, and they, some of them don't even get a hit. Uh, they're just trying to find a hole, and they don't get there, depending on what map you're on. So some other options are available there uh, for you to choose from. Uh, and now to the pet part of it, you've got the Gargantuan, which is this big guy right here. Um, and I'm running with Restless Giant. Uh, whenever you encounter an elite or near five enemies, which is quite often. Uh, it enrages for 15 seconds, and uh, it does all the stats there. And this does have a two-minute cooldown, so depending on what you're running with, uh, 
Uh, I know some people uh, run it here so that it only they only pop it whenever um, you know they need it. It's up for 15 seconds, but it's not up all the time. I prefer to have it up all the time. Uh, big stinker, the 45% uh, weapon damage is poison per second to nearby enemies. This might be good if you're on higher torment and you can't get stuff down. And it's really going to vary on your gameplay, but uh, for now I'm running with the uh, Restless Giant. There are some other things to do. If you're grouping stuff up a lot, this has the cleave ability. But for this one, we're going to go with that. Uh, the Zombie Dogs, which are these guys right here, and you've surely seen them. Uh, I am running this with Leeching Beast. Uh, this gives me an opportunity to not take much damage, especially farming higher torments. 100% um, of your life on hit with every attack. And I've got four of these guys, so it helps out quite a bit. There's other things you can run with uh, to either do damage or, you know, they'll absorb some of the damage for you now that, you know, they have higher um, higher health and stuff like that, so they're not going to die as often. So there's a lot of different stuff you can run with. You can even run with the 15% uh, chance to leave a health globe when they die. Uh, if your pets die, uh, I don't know. You're, you're really farming on some high torments. Um Mine never die. I don't want to say never, but hardly ever. Uh, on to the passive skills. We're going to run with Grave Injustice. And this is gain 1% of your maximum life and mana and reduce the cooldown of all your skills by one second when an enemy dies within 20 yards. Now, this is the biggest skill, I think, when you're running stuff. Because whenever something dies, and this happens often, and 20 yards is a pretty wide area, uh, you're going to get your cooldowns back very, very quickly. This Wall of Zombies has an 8-second cooldown. Uh, you kill two, three, four, you know, bad guys. And this is right back, you know, within just a few seconds of killing those. And then it reduces the cooldown. And we'll go over that uh, in the gameplay part uh, right after this. So, um, and then, of course, you see the range is extended by items that increase your gold pickup radius. So if you're running, um, you know, some items that might have that uh, affix on there, that's a big help. Um, this, we were actually running uh, something else. Um Pierce the Veil is the one that we're going to run here. All your damage is increased by 20%, but your mana costs are increased by 30%. Now, that goes back to the Fire Bats here. You've got the initial cost, but we're using the rune that reduces the channeling cost. And this is the reason why you're running that, is because you're doing the extra damage. And that extra 20% goes to your pets, all that, all of your abilities there. So all those pets, everything else is doing 20% more damage. This right here is your main attack. It's not going to drain you four mana. Uh, and this is the reason why we're running this build in this particular setup. So this is a good one to have. It really boosts up your damage in a lot of ways. Uh, here, Midnight Feast. Uh, and the reason I'm running this one, I'll show you in one second. Uh, you can have one additional zombie dog summoned at one time. And the damage of your zombie dogs in Gargantuan is increased by 50%. Since we're running a pet build, uh, you know, this is the reason why we're running the extra zombie dog. It does the extra damage, plus you get the extra 50% increase. And uh, before we go on to the next passive, the main item that I think you're going to look for as a um, as a witch doctor when you're running the pet build is the Mask of Jerem. Um, you'll see in the secondary stats there, pets deal 85% more damage. Now, I got kind of a low roll there, um, but this can increase. I, you know, it can, I believe it goes all the way up to 100%. And you could effectively double the damage of your pets by running this uh, helmet here. So this is one that you want to look out for. Um, I actually got the set piece. There actually is a set piece that goes uh, to this, um, to the Helltooth uh, um, set here. There is a Mask of Jerem, and I did farm that up, and it doesn't have the same secondary affix on there. So you're going to need the actual legendary one. Now, I'd farmed for quite a while and didn't get this. Um, I went to Kadala, I spent numerous amounts of blood shards, and sure enough, this Mask of Jerem popped off of Kadala. So if you're looking to spend, you know, blood shards, and you're doing the Witch Doctor build, I highly recommend just, you know, buying a bunch of helms. It's not guaranteed, obviously, and it could be very frustrating to gamble there, but this is where I got mine, and you can always get legendaries there. But if you're looking to increase your chances in getting this, and, you know, boosting the build up, that's where I got mine. Hopefully you have better luck than I did. Um... On to our last passive skill, the Fetish Sycophants here. When you cast a Physical Realm spell, you have a 5% chance to summon a dagger-wielding fetish to fight by your side for 60 seconds. Now, the Physical Realm spells, we actually have a couple on here. Uh, we've got Firebomb, we've got Wall of Zombies, and uh, we've got Firebat. So we've got three skills that are all going to summon these guys. Now, we don't have any here. Uh, it's not going to show up here, but we'll go ahead. Since this is a channeling cost, we'll go ahead and just keep this going here. And you're going to start to see these little guys with these little daggers pop up. 5%, um, you know, it's not 
just strictly 5%. It's 5% of every single tick, every single cast that you've got. So it's going to build up over time. Um, sometimes you'll pop a couple in a row, you know, because it depends on whichever one. So you'll see these guys, they're popping up. And now all of a sudden I've got four guys here running with me. And you can get, uh, you can get more than that. So now I have four dogs, I have four fetishes, I have a gargantuan, and in this case I have a Templar. So I've got a bunch of guys that are going to be tanking for me. And this is the pet build. And uh, so you can see all these guys running here and um, getting stuck on a wall. So we'll put these guys in action. Like I said, there are a lot of variations that you can run with. Um, I definitely, you know, would recommend running mass confusion in certain situations. Um, I alternate between this depending on what I'm playing. If you're going into a boss fight, which we'll do a boss fight here at the end of this so you can see how this works. Take off Wall of Zombies. Feel free to run um, Big Bad Voodoo with Slam Dance. This increases all damage of all nearby allies by 30%. Uh, this is a huge, huge boost, especially when you've got all your pets out, so you can kind of use those in conjunction. And uh, those do a ton of damage, uh, and we'll show that here in one second. We'll go kill Gom and see how fast he can die. Uh, a couple other things you might want to look at. Um, gruesome Feast, whenever a health globe drops, you're uh, boosting up your intelligence uh, um, yeah, by 10% and max mana there, which isn't as important. So you can stack this. It depends on how quickly you're running. Um, there are a lot of other options. Jungle Fortitude if you're running at high uh, torment levels and you need the extra reduction. Uh, there's a lot of things you can swap out there, especially Midnight Feast is not a necessity. So this is one you can kind of play with. Uh, but anyways, we'll get into some action here. Uh, and we'll kind of put this bad boy to work. We'll go to keep depths three because we're going to clear this out. And we're going to go. We're going to go to Gom, and uh, we're going to show you just how quickly this can go. Now we're going to use Wall of Zombies. Keep an eye on this because as stuff dies, uh, this is going to tick, and you'll see it um, cool down quite a bit. And uh, we'll we'll show you the ins and outs here of using this. Here we've got a uh, an elite here. We'll just go ahead. Let's get everybody in here. That's what the fetish sycophants. Uh, all those, as you can see, they died pretty quickly. We'll go ahead. I, you really don't even have to do anything. When those guys come out, they do a lot of damage. And uh, we're running on Torment, too. We can definitely run at a higher Torment with these guys. Uh, and here's an example. We'll go ahead. We'll pop a Wall of Zombies. I'm not even going to use my main attack. We'll just run the um, Fire Bombs there. Pets get in there, do a little bit of damage. And that guy died pretty quickly without even me attacking. So the pets are, are really where this build is. And here's this guy, and we're trapped here. I'm not real sure where I'm even at at this point. And so we'll run this down, and I don't want the I don't want to stand in the poison. I don't want to stand in the fire. So I'll just let these guys uh, kind of do their thing. I'll cast a skill through the doorway here. Sorry you can't see this in action, uh, but as you can see, the big crits that are coming in there, and uh, I didn't even. Other than the initial jail, I took no damage. I just kind of stood there, had a little bit of fun, and uh, let the other guys do all the work. So that's the fun of the pet build. I mean, you're not, you, you'll obviously be in danger at some point, but with this build, and here we'll go ahead and run with, um, run this down. I don't even have to cast Firebomb. I'm just doing it for, you know, the effects that you can see how it works. Uh, but cast in a wall of zombies, which, you know, some people will run with that, some won't. Some will run with the, uh, Piranha uh, skill there. Uh, just a lot of different stuff you can do uh, with this build. And I, th I, I enjoy the flexibility of it all. We'll talk to that poor sap, and he'll tell us some sad story, but he's dead. Um, outside of that, guys, if you got any questions on the build, uh, if you got any recommendations, uh, you know, I've tried out just about every skill possible uh, to see its effectiveness. Um, you know, I've found this to be quite effective when running by myself, uh, and it's not going to be for everybody. Um, so if you got other modifications, go ahead and feel free to leave them in the uh, comments below. I'm sure a lot of people are looking to try a lot of different things. This might not work for them. They might not have the mask of Jerem. Uh, so, you know, there's going to be a lot of different, um, you know, changes you can make. And, uh, we're not having much luck finding Gom here. So, uh, we'll just keep this going, but we'll run in here and put this on display. So, Guys, feel free to, uh, you know, leave comments below, leave any suggestions. I always read those. I always look in, uh, to try other stuff. Uh, this is a lot of fun. I love the pet build. I think that's the only reason I play the Witch Doctor. Um, but uh, feel free to, you know, like the video if you like the video. Uh, I would definitely appreciate that. Uh, until next time, guys, happy hunting. Enjoy the rest of the gameplay. 
And let's watch this guy die. Just